Hello, my name is Raisheen and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about the Reading Women Challenge. Since we are now six months into the year, I'm filming all of my check-in videos. I've already done the mid-year freakout tag and the best books of the year so far, and I will leave both of them in the cards above if you would like to go and check them out. This year I am also trying to do the Reading Women Challenge, which is a challenge hosted by the Reading Women podcast which is a podcast hosted by Kendra Winchester and Autumn Privet. And Kendra I know is on YouTube, so I will leave her linked in the description as well as the link to the Reading Woman podcast website. Um, and I will try and find Autumn as well and leave her linked in the description, whether that is Instagram or YouTube. Every year, Reading Women sets out a Reading Women challenge, which are 24 prompts to try and diversify your reading. So to fill the prompts, you have to read a book by a woman that fulfills one of these prompts, uh, or by a person of a marginalised gender. So you can read non-binary authors and fill in this challenge with those as well. There are also, there are also four bonus challenges which are specific authors to read this year. And this year's focus is on reading more international women. According to Storygraph, Storygraph has this great thing where you can fill in like join challenges that have been set up on Storygraph and the Reading Women challenge is one of them. I'll link the challenge page in the description below as well. And according to Storygraph, I have already completed 67% of the challenges. So halfway through the year, I am two thirds of the way through the challenges on this list, which is great. I've also completed one of the bonus challenges. So I'm going to talk you through them. Challenge for number one is to read a book long listed for the JCB prize. The JCB prize is a book prize awarded in India for fiction by an Indian writer. I haven't completed this prompt yet, but I know I need to. Um, so that's one that I um, have to focus on for the second half of the year. Prompt number two is to read a book by an author from Eastern Europe. There are a list of the countries that count Eastern Europe, Belarus, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, Hungary, etc. Uh, and for this, I have read The Union of Synchronised Swimmers by Christine Sandu, which is a novella about women from an Eastern Bloc country during the Cold War who try to escape through going to the Olympics to do synchronised swimming. It was very, very short um, and I was very surprised by how short it was. It wasn't my favourite book, but it does but as Christina Sandu is Finnish Romanian, um, I think it counts because Romania is definitely in Eastern Europe. Number three is a book about incarceration and I read Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward this year which tells the story of Jojo and his mother Leonie going to collect his father from prison. It also talks about Jojo's grandfather Rivers and his experience being incarcerated in the same prison during segregation and how the incarceration system is an extension of slavery. So I definitely think that that covers this prompt. Number four is a cookbook by a woman of colour and I don't often read cookbooks, definitely not from cover to cover, so I think this is going to be a bit more of a challenge for me to fit in. Um, it's not one that I have read so far, but the good thing about Storygraph is that it also lists all of the books that other people have included for this prompt, so I can have a look through them to try and find a cookbook that I actually want to read rather than just have four recipes occasionally. Prompt number five is a book with a protagonist older than 50. This year I read Mrs Death, Mrs Death and Mrs Death in this book is an old woman, um, an old black woman who I think is in her 80s I think it is mentioned in the book and um, so she's definitely a protagonist older than 50 because although she is depicted as being in her 80s death is obviously as old as humanity. Uh, this is quite an experimental novel that didn't quite land for me. Um, I did read this in a vlog so I'll leave it in the cards above if you are interested in that um, but death was definitely over 50 in this book um, and it's about her and a character called Wolf who is interviewing her and um, it has like little vignettes of death throughout time and it talks a lot about race, class and gender in relation to death and whose deaths are mourned and whose are celebrated. Number six is a book by a South American author in translation and this is another one that I haven't done yet which is really disappointing for me because one of my goals this year, if you watched my goals check-in you will know, I'll leave it in the cards above, was to read more books by Latine authors. I have read uh, last year I only read one book by a Latine author. I read A Long Petal of the Sea by Isabel Allende, who's Chilean, and that was it. So reading more books by Latin American authors should be easy for me because I only have to read more than one to complete that goal, and also because it's part of this challenge. I actually have Of Women and Salt here by Gabrielle Garcia, although I don't think this is translated. Um, she's definitely a, uh, she's definitely a Latina, a Latina author, but I don't think this is translated, so it wouldn't count for this prompt. Uh, prompt number seven is to reread a favourite, and I have read for the first time and reread a couple more times Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. This is a book of sort of young YA children's middle grade fantasy, um, but 
about a wizard from Wales who lives in a world where magic is possible and a girl who is turned into an old woman and who ends up in the in the wizard's moving castle and the um, hijinks that ensue. I really love this book for the whimsy, for the escapism, for the relationships. Um, uh, I think that they are very well drawn comedic characters. There's a lot of likeness and a lot of love. So I really enjoyed this book and I enjoyed rereading it as well. Number eight is a memoir by an Indigenous First Nations native or Aboriginal woman. And I have not read one of those yet this year. This month, July, for my Read Around the World challenge, I am reading books by um, Aboriginal Maori and Torres Strait Islander writers. But I don't think any of them are memoirs. So I'm not going to fit it, feel that that's in this month either. Maybe I should try and look for a memoir to fill that in. Um, because I, I have... I don't have a huge amount of experience reading memoirs. It's not a genre that I tend towards. But I'm definitely going to think about reading this because I know there are several memoirs such as A Mind Spread Out on the Ground um, and maybe even Braiding Sweet Grass. I'm not sure if that's quite a memoir by Native American authors that I would like to read at some point. So I should put them on my TBR for the rest of the year. Number nine is a book by a neurodivergent author. And I have read two books by neurodivergent uh, well, one by a new neurodivergent woman and one by a neurodivergent non-binary author um, that I have read this year. Um, I read Wintering by Catherine May, who is autistic, and Wintering is a non-fiction book about um, the times in our life where we need to kind of hibernate and care for ourselves, slow down and focus in. Um, and it talks about things like how animals hibernate, um, what the Nordic and Scandinavian countries do over winter. Um, and like cold water swimming and the Win Hof method, things like that, um, talking about winter, but also talking about just taking care of yourself, slowing down and cocooning rather than trying to keep up with the pace of the world. And I really enjoyed that. And then I also read Freshwater and The Death of Vivek Oji, who are both, which are both by Akweke Amezi, who is a non-binary neurodivergent writer, um, who is very, very beloved on booktube. And whilst I didn't love these quite to the same extent of the hype on booktube, I did think they were both good books. Number 10 is a crime novel or thriller in translation. Now, crime novels and thrillers aren't my bread and butter anyway. I think I've only read one thriller so far this year. Yeah, I read Raven Black by Anne Cleves when I was reading books recommended to me by my subscribers, which again, I will leave in the cards if there is room up there. And that was not in translation. And Cleves, I believe, is a Scottish writer, um, but definitely she writes in English. So uh, if you have any recommendations for me for crime and thriller books in translation, I would love to hear them because because I don't read a lot, I'm not really au fait with what's going on in that genre um, and what is good to read. So, so if you know any that are in translation and by women, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you recommend. Number 11 is a book about the natural world. And for this, I read The Living Mountain by Nan Shepherd, which is about the Ken Gorms, a mountain range in Scotland. It is also a classic. Um, it was written in the 1940s during the Second World War. And Nan Shepherd is a woman who walked on the mountains pretty much every day of her life. I have a lot of trouble with mid-century classics and the same was true here. Um, I often find them very distant and hard to get a grasp on. And that's how I felt about this book as well. But it's definitely beautiful writing about the natural world. Number 12 is a young adult novel by a Latina author. Now, as I've already mentioned, I haven't read any books by Latina authors so far this year, so I need to work on that. And I'm also not a huge YA reader. Although, as I mentioned, I have enjoyed um, the sort of more light-hearted, whimsical, fan lightly fantastic, um, maybe slightly fairy tale esque YA recently. Um, so if you know any of those by Latin American authors, again, I would love to you to let me know in the description down below. Just nothing too heavy, overwrought, high fantasy. That's not my style at all. Um, but if it's just a bit more light and fun and whimsical, then I might be able to get on board with it. Number 13 is a poetry collection by a black woman. And this year I read Citizen, an American lyric by Claudia Rankin, which is about which is about racist microaggressions um, through the media and also through uh, the voice of one woman's experience. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's Claudia Rankin's. It's a uh, prose poetry so some of it uh, prose poetry sort of littered throughout with different microaggression instances and then also experiences of um people like serena williams and i think it was zinedine zidane and their experiences of racism and how that was portrayed in the media as well um i thought it was very clever but i didn't love the the poetry style itself was not my personal preference for poetry 
Number 14, a book with a biracial protagonist. I read The Old Drift by Namuali Sopel, which is a book that I have raved about because I loved it so much. Uh, this book is about three families, two of which are mixed race families. So we have a family of black, uh, this is set in Zambia, so there is a family of black Zambians, a family of mixed race black and white Zambians, and a family of mixed race Italian and Indian people who live in Zambia as well. So um, there are several biracial protagonists throughout this novel. It's kind of a multi-voiced, like multi-protagonist novel there's not like one main character um so that might be a reason you would think it didn't fit this prop prompt but definitely several of the characters are biracial and their biracial identity is a big part of the novel um because a lot of it is about um racism and the caste system in southern africa Number 15 is a Muslim middle grade novel and I read The Henna Wars by Abida Jagadar um this is kind of borderline young YA middle grade but I think it counts and um, the children in it are quite young and there's nothing very explicit or very much for older children. I think that you could read this aged 11 or 12 and get as much out of it as if you were 15 or 16 um, and it is about a Muslim girl who is uh, a lesbian and coming to terms with her lesbian identity but it is also about her doing henna for a school project and this other girl also wanting to do henna um, but the other girl it's not part of her culture um, so there is themes of cultural appropriation and appreciation in there as well. Um, very light novel. The audiobook was made much more Americanized for some reason, even though this book is Irish um, and everything sort of butted against one another and I wasn't sure why it did that. It didn't feel very smooth or easy to understand for me. Um, and itself, it just all felt a bit light and fluffy. Um, the writing itself wasn't particularly anything to write home about. Number 16 is a book featuring a queer love story and I read The Death of Vivek OJ by Kweke Amezi uh, which features um, a queer love story although I have read more than one <laughs> book with a queer love story um, for example The Henna Wars would also fit for that and so would Days Without End by Sebastian Barry um, also featured a queer love story um, so I've read quite a few queer love stories so far this year um, they are definitely something that I am drawn towards. 17 is about a woman in politics um, bonus points for reading about a woman in politics from a country that is not your own. Now I don't know if this has to be non-fiction, it kind of sounds like it should be non-fiction to fulfil that prompt, um, but it's definitely not something I have read so far this year, um, so I would have to go seeking it out. Uh, there are not very many books about women in politics that I'm interested in reading. I'm not interested in reading Hillary Clinton or Michelle Obama's books, um, so I can't really think of any others that are about women in politics that I know particularly well. Jess Phillips, also not interested in reading hers either, and she is from my own country, so um, I'd rather read something that was not about the UK or US, um, or yeah, so I, I if, again, if you have any recommendations for books about women in politics who are not UK US, I would love to hear in the description, in the comments down below. And number 18 is a book with a rural setting and for this I've chosen Segu by Maurice Condé which actually has both a city and rural setting. It has many many different settings but a lot of them are rural. Um, Segu itself is, considers itself a town but then when one of the children of Segu goes to goes to um I think it's Morocco it might be Algeria he realizes how much of a small village it is compared to other size other towns um and it is about Segu which is a kingdom in of West Africa in modern day Mali four of the children of this town and four of the sons of this town and they're kind of spreading throughout the world it's very much about the meeting of um Arabic and Western Arabic and white and West African cultures in the 17th and eighth no in the 18th and 19th century um it's a big epic of a book um but most of the settings I would consider to be rural. Number 19 is a book with a cover designed by the woman by a woman and for this I've chosen If I Heard Your Face by Frances Char um, and this is the cover I'm talking about I really like this cover as well um I think it's really evocative of what the story is about and it was designed by I believe it was designed by Holly Ovenden. Prompt number 20 is a book by an Arab author in translation and I just read this one and that is Celestial Bodies by Jokka al Harti, which is a book by an Omani author um which won the International Man Booker which is a prize for translated fiction um and it is about three daughters of an Omani family in the 60s and 70s and 80s I think. 21 is a book by a trans author. Now I've already read, I've already mentioned that I read Kweke Mezi who is a non-binary trans author but I also read the probably the biggest book by a trans author this year, Detransition Baby by Tori Peters which is a book about a queer family. About Ames who uh, was a trans woman who has detransitioned and gets his 
uh, gets his boss Katrina pregnant um, and then he calls up his ex-girlfriend Reese and says uh, to find out if she wants to raise the baby with them um, it was long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction and has been praised everywhere I liked it but didn't quite love it it didn't quite live up to the hype for me there were some conveniences of plot but I did think it was a really well written funny book uh, number 22 is to read a fantasy novel written by an Asian author and again I have hardly read any fantasy this year it's not really my genre at all um, I know I want to read there's one by a Malaysian author that came out this year it's Blackwater Sister by Zen Cho again I love the cover this is the cover for that one and um, a lot of people have been raving about how good it is uh, it's about a woman who goes back to Malaysia after her grandma dies I think um country she hasn't been to for a long time and starts hearing her grandmother's voice um so it's one that I'm intrigued by it was on my anticipated releases list so hopefully I will get to that one before the end of the year prompt number 23 is a non-fiction book focused on social justice and I think that Don't Touch My Hair by Emma Dabiri is one that fulfills this prompt it is about the, talking about black people through black hair um and it talks about like colonialist ideas of time it talks about um algorithms and mathematics it talks about racism and how racism relates to hair um so i think it's a lot about uh, colonial understandings of hair white people and black hair um, and also colorism within the black community and how that relates to hair as well so i think that this one counts as focusing on social justice number 24 prompt number 24 is a short story collection by a caribbean author and i read how to Love a Jamaican by Alexia Arthurs, who is a Jamaican author. And these are a collection of stories about Jamaican people, um, both on the island of Jamaica and in the Jamaican diaspora, focused primarily in the US. I believe that Alexia, Arth uh, Alexia Arthurs is a Jamaican author who lives in the US. Um, so that those are her perspective. Uh, I thought this was good, not great. Some of the stories were better than others, as often happens with short story collections. Um, they weren't really my style, but I can see how they would be really popular because they are very accessible and very human. And then the other ones, the bonus ones, are uh, the one of them is a book by Tsitsi Dangaremga and I read Nervous Conditions by Tsitsi Dangaremga when I was reading books by Southern African authors, which again I will leave in the cards above. Uh, and this is a book that didn't quite make my top 10 books of the year, but very nearly did. I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, it's about, it's an auto fiction uh, about Tsitsi, about a girl growing up in Zimbabwe when it is Rhodesia in the 60s and her trying to get an education and the clashes between um, sort of colonial, colonialism, tradition, um, idea, class and education, gender. There's a lot going on in a very sort of uh, low key book, but I think it's really, really great. There is also to read a book by Alexis Wright, who is an Aboriginal Australian author. And um, I have the Swan book here. So I haven't actually read this, but this is one of the books that is on my TBR for July. One of the books that I'm reading for books by Aboriginal and Maori authors. So um, yeah, hopefully I will read this this month and that will complete that prompt. There was also the bonus prompt to read a book by Leila Abu Leila, um, who is not an author I've actually heard of, although there are lots of books here that other people have added by her. British, she's a British Muslim woman, um, I think. In Cairo, grew up in Cartier, Khartoum and moved in her mid-twenties to Aberdeen so yeah she's a so I'll have to get into reading some of her books I don't know if she just writes non-fiction no fiction writer of Sudanese origin yeah okay and then then the final writer who fulfills one of the bonus prompts I'm sorry if you can hear that in the background today has been a real field day for my neighbours making noise is a book by Yoko Ogawa who I know wrote The Memory Police which was really really popular on booktube um, and is a Japanese writer so I think that um, it will either be The Housekeeper and the Professor or The Memory Police that I end up reading because those are the ones that I've heard so much about if I do manage to fulfil this prompt. Those are all the prompts that I have completed and the ones that I have yet to do. Um, I've only got a third of them left before the end of the year plus the three bonus prompts that I haven't done yet um, although one of them hopefully will be completed fairly soon. Uh, I enjoy this challenge because it it um, gives you sort of directions to go in whilst trying to broaden your reading um, and I think that it's for me I always enjoy challenges that's why I do them every month on this channel um, I love having goals and aims put to me so I'm enjoying participating in this although I haven't been focusing it on it that much I still seem to have managed to do, do quite well so far are you are you participating in the reading women challenge let me know in the comments down below how you're doing if you are if you enjoyed this video I'll leave a couple here that I think you will enjoy as well and if you aren't subscribed I would really appreciate it if you would I will put a little button here so you can do so I put out new videos three times a week and so I'll be here again very very soon thank you for watching bye bye